you can't push yourself forward if all you thinking about is the doubts and the negative things that people are saying because you're relying more on their ideas and their dreams of you instead of you relying on your own dreams and ideas of yourself why would you want to surround yourself with people that don't have ideas that are great why would you want to surround yourself because of a number you know a lot of people tend to wonder oh how many friends they have and how many people in their corner? Oh, I have a million followers. I have tens and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that support me. How many of those people do you actually know? Do you realize the power that you have right now? Even the people that don't like you, they are drawn to you. They see you, but they don't see your greatness. They don't see what you truly have inside. They are afraid of it. They don't lift it up. They don't encourage it because they're not happy. So they want you to come on their side. They want you to believe in their ideas of what you think of yourself. They doubt you and you believe what they doubt. Instead of you waking up from your slumber, Instead of you waking up from this nightmare of despair and letting your opportunities come to life. It's going to be a tough time, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be rough. It's going to be some tough times and tough days ahead for you. But that doesn't mean your ideas are going to die. That doesn't mean that you stop. It doesn't mean you stop believing in yourself. You just gotta keep on working. When you got people looking at you from the left side and the right side, from the front to the back, and you in the middle, <laughs> just remember, everybody's watching. Just give them something to see. Let them see it. Are you watching me? <laughs> Watch this. Or you wanna stop me? You can't stop this. That's the mentality that you must have in yourself. Don't you dare give up now. I know what that pain feels like. I know how to absorb that pain. And I know how to keep marching. And I know how to keep moving. And I know how to get productive in my life. Can't stop what you didn't create. You can hate it, but you can't dominate it because it belongs to me. Your ideas belongs to you. So many people dream big dreams, but they never take any action. So listen to me carefully. If you don't believe in yourself, you've already lost the battle. Not believing in yourself is a losing battle because either you won't try at all or you will convince yourself that you can't do it. And when you convince yourself that you can't do it, your results are going to confirm what you believe. You fall short of your goals when you predict that you're not going to hit them. And sometimes you're too focused on probability. You're asking yourself, well, what's the likelihood of this happening? Versus focusing on the possibility asking yourself, how would my life change if I accomplished this? Ask yourself that question and don't wait on approval from anyone outside of you. And don't feel bad because you feel like no one is cheering for you. No, you've got to decide that you are your biggest fan. You've got to decide that you're going to finish what you started if you don't have one person supporting you. If nobody acknowledges you, acknowledge yourself. If nobody supports you, support yourself. This is the thing. If you keep showing up, if you keep going hard, if you stay consistent through your valley moments, your results will turn those who ignored you into fans. 
It's not that you don't want everything that comes with the path that leads to your true potential, but you are too hung up on blaming the past and the present. You are too hung up on blaming your mom for how she treated you when you were younger. You are too hung up on blaming your teachers for how they spoke to you. You're too hung up on the shitty thing that happened to you years ago. I'm not trying to discredit your pain, but you gotta let that go. And because of that, you aren't able to appreciate the strength and power you have today. You aren't able to step into that power because you are choosing to justify excuses every single time you open your fucking eyes. It's time to take responsibility. Understand that you are in control of how you feel every day, what you do every day, how you act every day. So don't get it twisted. The excuse that these outside sources control how you feel, what you do and how you act is just a justification that has been drilled into your head since you were younger. Break out of it. Understand that we have the power to change our lives. Stop putting the power in other people's hands by blaming them for your current situation. Take that shit back. Take that shit back. Choose to shift the trajectory of your life so you can live up to your true potential. And don't for one second think it's going to be easy. If it's important to you, you're going to find a way. You won't have to look for a resource. You will become resourceful. It's not always about the accomplishment. It's about the effort. If we can just keep the effort going, the excuse is irrelevant. You gotta be stronger than your excuses. Excuses don't get results. We get one opportunity to come this way. We get one shot, we got one life to live. Life is too short to make excuses. We get this strange feeling that we have never had, you see, in our lives. That we are no longer this poor little stranger and afraid in a world it never made. Momentum is a big thing with human beings. It's a big thing for me, at least. If I'm on a good momentum of healthy eating and exercise, I love it. I yep. like waking up sore, pushing further. I like writing down my workouts, what I've done. And I like hitting that gym hard on a daily basis. And I, I build momentum. And I find that when I do that with writing, whether I do that with performing, whether I do that with anything, it just, it just gets everything going. It just creates energy. Being lazy robs you of energy. Like being sedentary, being uninspired, being bored, it robs you of one of the most precious things you can have in this life, enthusiasm. One of the things that I tell people all the time, because a lot of people have a hard time defining themselves. They define themselves by failure because they failed. But I'm like, you're not your failures, you're you. Okay, your life is a series of lessons you've learned. Now, if you just dwell on the failures, like that's not, that's not healthy, it's not smart, and it's not empowering. What you gotta do is look at those failures and go, well, now you know what not to do. But you're not that, you're yep. you. It was hard because <laughs> so happy to be and have the job I have. At the same time, I was like, I'm not, don't feel like I'm growing in my work. And my life had, at that time had become extremely vital, meaning I just had a newborn son with Camilla. Wow, the only thing I ever knew I wanted to be, and now I was. And here's this job that I had held most reverence for in my life, fatherhood, now I was. Uh, I was. The, my emotions, the ceiling and the basement of my emotions, the range was so wide. I was laughing louder, crying harder, getting angrier, showing more joy, having more sadness, having, all, all across the board. All emotions were much more extreme than they were or could be in the work. I said, your life's more vital than your work, but can my work challenge the vitality I'm feeling in my life? So 
the work I wanted to do. I heard certain scripts I wanted to, wanted to do Dallas Buyers Club at that time. Other scripts, nobody's going to touch me with a 10-foot pole in those movies. All the dramatic roles I wanted, they're like, no, 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 not with God, I even want financing. Okay, so I can't do what I want to do, so I'm going to stop doing what I've been doing. So I stopped doing rom-coms. I said, no, I stopped. Well, for the first six months of not doing rom-coms, I wasn't doing anything. Finally, nothing came in. And for 14 more months, nothing came in. I considered other careers. Didn't know if it'd ever work again. But after 20 months of being gone, unbranding as I now call it, being out of sight, not being in your theater or your living room in a rom-com, not seeing me shirtless on the beach, I became a new good idea. I don't know, I haven't seen him, where has he been? I was kind of refound. So I, 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 I had to do that for myself. I loved doing the rom-coms, but I was getting the scripts and I felt like I could do the same script tomorrow morning. And I was like, that's fine, but I want something that's gonna make me sweat in my boots. I want some work that's gonna challenge me and make me go, I'm scared of this role for all the right reasons. And I can't wait to go attack it and see what I come, see how I come up the other side. Why seek the role that's hard? Because it costs me something. Because it costs. It's not really a risk unless you can lose the fight. I feel more alive in them. I have an experience in the making of them. I'm nervous every day I come to work. I feel like when I nail a day and I knock it and I know I did, I feel like, yes. I, get, I, I have a measure at the end of the day, like you set out to do something, you prepared for it, you had intention and you did it. You know, there's lots of different ways to interpret the world and you can maybe even make a case that there's an endless number of ways to interpret the world. And the problem with that is that it kind of disorients you in terms of what you should be doing. Just because there's a very large number of ways to interpret the world doesn't mean there's a very large number of productive, meaningful, and sustainable ways to interpret the world. The thing that's so interesting about the day, the day is like a page in a book. I had one client who was spending about 45 minutes a night fighting with his young son about when to go to bed. And so, you know, they weren't having a pleasant time of it because it was just a constant battle. And that's common. Like, it's very common for parents of young children to be locked in a battle that occurs day after day. Sometimes it's around eating. Sometimes it's toilet training. Sometimes it's general behavioral issues. Sometimes it's bedtime. It's like, okay, 40 minutes a day. So that's 280 minutes a week. So that's, let's say, five hours. It's 20 hours a month. It's 240 hours in a year. That's six work weeks. That's a month and a half. You're spending a month and a half of work weeks doing nothing but fighting with your son. Don't fool yourself. Yep. Anything that's every day is a significant percentage of your life. You're awake, let's say, 16 hours. Five of those hours are basically maintenance. So you got about 11. And then seven of those are work. So now you're down to four. And so if you're spending 15 minutes a day doing something painful and stupid and you do it every day, it's like 10% of your productive life. Because people think backwards. They think, well, I have a vacation coming up and that's really important. It's like, no, it's not. You're only going to do it once. It's not that important. Yeah. Um, how you treat each other at lunchtime, if you eat together every day, that's your life. Yeah. Fix that. Yeah. Get, it, get it so that the food's good. Get it so that you're happy with the people that are sitting there. Fix that. It's like, poof, 10% of your life is fixed. The purpose is to align ourselves to really make a change. So you can either be the conversation about making change or you can be actual a part of the action to do it. I want to be a part of the action. I don't want to be you or beat you. I want to take this energy and apply it to myself. That's the purpose of seeing. So I come here and I look at how you maneuver. I look at your setup. I not only bow down and congratulate you, I leave and I say, yo, man, I'm inspired, dude. I can't wait in two years You're going to come And you're going to see my shit And you remember I said I was inspired But you're going to see What I let it grow into That's the proper way To get encouraged And motivated Look at your circle Right When you can merge yourself With good people And follow the paths That you see that these good Successful people Have taken You then become a part of a world And group that nobody expected you to be in so everything else from the outside that comes in, you're, you're, you're throwing sh 
at a at a at a bubble that can't be popped. It's a force field around me. It's a force field around me because what matters, what really matters, loves me wholeheartedly. And when you have that, and you understand that, you're unbreakable. So if you don't add to that force field, if you don't make my force field stronger, you don't, you don't, you don't get time from me. My true understanding is, all right, you got one life. And that one life, the goal for us is to live it to the best of our ability from the beginning to what's said the end. People don't understand is you against you. The only person that gets in your way is you. Nobody else. It's you. What I've understood is that what people are doing has nothing to do with me. I should always be a step ahead because I'm thinking differently. Because I'm thinking about myself. Making myself better puts me in a position to make others better. Hard work brings great reward. I wish that I could tell you that the load you carry will get lighter. It won't. As time passes, you'll find it will get heavier. The mountain that you need to climb will get higher. The ocean that you need to cross will get wider. Trust me when I tell you that you don't want to wait. Indecision is a decision. A decision to fail. A decision to waste your potential. Time won't wait for you. Time doesn't wait for anyone. The clock keeps ticking in life. There are no timeouts, no breaks, and no rest stops. Remember something else, that if plan A doesn't work, there are 25 other letters in the alphabet. This isn't three strikes and you're out. This isn't baseball, it's the real world. And that means there's no limit on how many times you're allowed to try. The only time your dream dies is when you decide to quit. You need to be ready for what's to come. When the darkness sets in, when you feel like you can't take another step forward, believe in yourself. You will keep going, you will persevere. You will weather the storm. Trust in yourself, the kind of trust a bird has. You see, the bird doesn't put its trust in the branch. It puts its trust in its own wings, so when the branch breaks, it can still fly. Again, you can weather any storm. You can withstand anything the world throws at you. Remember that the safest path brings the least reward. Stop being afraid of what could go wrong and start believing in what could go right. There may be a million reasons you're afraid to follow your dreams, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go after what your heart desires. Dare to face your fears, Dare to take risks. Dare to be better. The real question is how bad do you want it and what are you willing to do to get it? Within you is a power far greater than you can imagine. Harness that power and unleash it. Believe in yourself way before anyone else does. Believe that your dreams can come true. Believe in your capacity for greatness. Success isn't about greatness. It's about consistency. No one's born great. You don't get to choose how you start in this life, but you do get to choose what you do. We all have a choice when it comes to building our future. If you show up day after day and work hard, if you give your full effort, if you leave nothing on the table, then greatness and success will come. You'll be faced with difficult situations. There'll be times that you don't believe in your ability to persevere. There'll be times you feel incapable of rising to meet the challenges that face you. You'll be tempted to turn your back and run, but running is never the best option. When you're in the middle of a struggle, the only way out is through. Rather than running away from obstacles or trying to figure out some kind of way around them, go right through them. Brace yourself, steady your nerves, put your head down, and tackle whatever you face head on. The storm may jar you a bit, but I promise that you won't buckle and you won't break. 
believe in your ability to weather the storm. When you come out on the other side, you'll be better for showing your strength. The fears you face along the way, they'll make you better. Our biggest fears always carry with them the greatest opportunity for personal growth. Our fears and how we face them brings out the best in us. If something doesn't scare us, if something doesn't challenge us, it doesn't change us. In life, we have two choices. We either step forward, expose ourselves to risk and evolve, or we play it safe and we step backwards into the shadows. Your dreams aren't going to come true on their own, so it's time to get to work. It's not gonna be easy. Great things never get dropped in your lap and they never start from comfort zones. If you want to be something you've never been, you need to do something you've never done. Scary, right? Wrong. You know what's really scary? Being trapped in a perpetual cycle of unhappiness. Looking at yourself in the mirror each day and not liking the reflection you see staring back at you. Don't live your life like that. At any time, you can change your circumstances and you can change your life. You have the power to do anything you want to do. You just need to be willing to do things differently than you've done before. You need to be willing to take risks. You need to be daring. If you're willing to step out of your safe zone, if you're willing to stand at the edge of the cliff and jump, if you're willing to do what you've never done, you'll give yourself the power to become what you've never been. Will it be easy? Probably not. But if you want to change your life, you'll need to do what's right, not what's easy. Too many people choose the easy road even when they know it's not the right road. Take the path less traveled. Real greatness isn't determined by some birthright or fate. Real greatness is determined by what you do with the hand that you're dealt. The true secret of success is to accept the truth that the only path is the path of hard work and productivity. You'll get where you want to go and achieve your goals if you follow four simple rules. Show up, work hard, don't quit, and ask some questions along the way. Do you want to coast through life without fulfilling the potential that lives within you? Do you really want to wake up one day and realize that all of the dreams you have had have passed you by? Each one of us has dreams and we have passions. We have things that we want to accomplish. You're the only person who needs to be okay with how you live your life. You could be hated by everyone and if you're okay with your actions and behavior, you'll be content. At the same time, you could be loved and adored by every damn person on the planet. But if you're not okay with how you've lived your life, you'll go to bed with emptiness. At the end of the day, if you and you alone can look yourself in the mirror and be content with the choices you've made, then that's all that matters. Believe in everything that you are and understand that within you there's something greater than any obstacle you'll ever face. Have faith in your abilities, work hard, never give up, and there's nothing you can't accomplish. So the key is to just do you. With the right amount of confidence, anything is possible. No matter what you set out to do, your first word should always be, I believe in me. The most important person to believe in is always yourself. So you know one of your biggest problems is that you keep thinking that there is another you. And for me, I started to accomplish more than I ever have in my life when I realized that there's nobody like me and there's nobody that can do what I can do. You have to come to the resolve today, now, that you don't need anyone's permission to make your dream a reality. And it may not always go the way you want, but at the end of the day, you have to understand that there's a reason for you. And there's a reason why things happen. Once those things have been figured out, now you're going to move on to purpose. Purpose has already been written. It has a bottom line to it. There is no, was this supposed to happen? There was no coincidence attached to it. It was meant to be. It is going to happen no matter what you think, no matter what I think, no matter how any of us feel in this world. Purpose has already been written. See, 
We're not supposed to tuck our dreams in on the pillow when we get up in the morning. We're not supposed to leave them at home. We can go and fulfill somebody else's dream. We're not supposed to do that. That's not what we're wired to do. That's not who we are. Your human spirit doesn't care about the economy. The human spirit doesn't care that my son's father went to prison. My, the human spirit doesn't care what's happened to your family. The human spirit doesn't care about the past. You may have been molested or your family may have been broke or, or you may have been betrayed or you may have a divorce. Your human spirit doesn't care about any of that. Your human spirit simply says, what's our command for today? tomorrow every room you walk into you show up and you show out and you leave it all on the table remember your passions when you don't see a light at the end of your tunnel you got to remember the light that is burning inside of you that nobody is able to put out there is not a person on this planet that can stop you I know there are a lot of people out there that are always saying that they want to go back or saying that they have to get back to something. The goal is, is to move forward. Don't ever get yourself in a position where you feel you have to always go back or saying that you have to get back to doing what you used to do or getting back to what you had before or whatever. The goal is to move forward. The best thing you can do is try your very best not to fall off track. There are three types of people in this world. There are people who watch things happen. There are people who wonder what happened. And there are people who make things happen. You got to determine which person you are. You can make a wish or you can make it happen. You must first believe that you can, that you will, that you must. When you are no longer willing to tolerate being in the room of failure, then that's when you're going to break free. See, either you don't want to be as great as you really are, and you're trying to dim your light so that others won't feel insecure about themselves in your presence. And so you keep playing at 79 watts when you know you're supposed to shine at 159 watts. And you keep checking the temperature of the room to see what the room can handle versus just giving the room you and letting them, if, the, if your light's too bright, then let them put on some shades. Can you give yourself permission to live in the duality of your imperfections and your smallness and what you're learning and what you still have to learn and your greatness and your brilliance and your light? Can you allow them to coexist and then serve them up to the world? To love you, to see you, to inhale you, to judge you, to leave you, to love you. Some of us are just as afraid of being loved as we are to be left. Get up, work hard, put some effort into what you want out of life because all you have is you. All you have is what you have inside. Don't wait for somebody to tell you what to do. You know what you need to do. Get out there and get it done because that's ultimately what it's going to take. You have to have the courage, the will, and everything you have inside to get to the level and beyond the level you want to be. There was enough fire inside of you. After everything you have been through, you've got to be able to see your value. Others have failed. Others have gone. Others have missed their moment. You must accept this truth that you were born for such a time as this. And that at this very moment, all you have is all you need. between reason and purpose, there is you. You have to be willing to understand that you have to work day in and day out and be the best human being, the best person you can be. And through it all, the good and the bad, you have to stand strong. You have to understand that there is a significant balance to all of us as long as we are in this world. But you gotta do the very best you can to get through it and to be strong, and to be productive, and be as successful as you can possibly be. Your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly. That you never leaped. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are. Before they really get your fingerprint. Before they really feel your breath. Before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to leave this place without us knowing you were here. How did you dream before you got hurt? I want you to start thinking about all the memories that you wanted to build. 
the stories that you wanted to tell. But for many of you, defeat has traumatized you and it has left an image in your head and this is why you won't go after it. I want you to erase the face of defeat and embrace the process. None of us are gonna be here for long. Sooner or later, you gotta leave this planet. But make the best of the life that you have on this day and the day after. So if tomorrow comes for you, tomorrow gonna come for me, let's get out there and make the best of it. Because tomorrow is another day. And if you're a part of that day, that means you got work to do. There is no one like you in all of the earth. There is no one that can do what you can do. You are the only option. You are the only play. Nobody else is going to be able to do this. And so we're all waiting for perfect. It's an illusion that will never come to you and it's an excuse to never show up and play. Your story is not meant to be your fortress. Your story is meant to be your fuel. Get out there, work. No matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter what's going on in your life, you still have a chance. Make it count for something. Get it done and conduct your business. I hate plan B. Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Or no. We have so many doubters, the no-sayers. We have so many of those people that say no and you can't do it, that's impossible. But when you start doubting yourself, that's very dangerous. Because now what you're basically saying is, is that if my plan doesn't work, I have a fallback plan, I have a plan B. You're taking away now that thought and that energy from plan A. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. Because I am a strong believer. I'm telling you, I've never ever had a plan B. I made a full commitment that I'm gonna go and be a bodybuilding champion. I made a full commitment that I'm gonna be in America. I made a full commitment that I'm gonna get in the show business and I'm going to be a leading man. No matter what it takes, I will do the work. And it's very important to understand that we function better if there is no safety net because plan B becomes a safety net. It says that if I fail, then I fall and I get picked up and I have something else there that, was, that will protect me. What is if I fail, then I don't have anything else? Well, let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of failing because there's nothing wrong with failing. So people always ask me, when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they say, why is it that you're working out so hard, five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face? Why is that? And I told people all the time, I said, because to me, I am shooting for gold. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. Michael Jordan said in one of his interviews, when they said, you are unbelievable, you're the greatest basketball player of all times. And he says, well, you just mentioned the successes. But he says, for me to become the greatest basketball player, I missed 9,000 shots when I was playing basketball at the NBA games. Does it make him a failure? No. He's one of the greatest basketball players of all times, but he failed. 9,000 times, do you get it? We all fail. It's okay. What is not okay is 
that when you fail, you stay down. It's all about the hard work that you put in. When you leave this place, I need you to get in beast mode and stay in beast mode. On three, beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. No, come on. One, two, three. Beast mode. Come on. One, two, three. Beast mode. If you wake up at 3.30, some other kid's getting up at 3 and he's got 30, 30 minutes on you today. I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you not only to want to be a beast, I need you to live in beast mode. Because if you live in beast mode, you'll have what other people don't have. Listen to me very closely. Not only will you have what other people don't have, you'll do what other people can't do. So what is it? What is that one thing that you're saying that I am going to get this thing done and I'm gonna make my dreams become a reality? Everyone wants to be a beast until it's time to do a real beast do. Everybody wants to be a beast. Everybody wants to make their dreams become a reality. There's no one sitting in this room who say, I want to procrastinate. I don't want to get it done. I don't want to get to the next level. No, every person in this room, not only do you want your dreams to become a reality, you deserve for your dreams to become a reality. This is important. Seasons are always temporary. Say it. Crisis is not a permanent condition. It's just a season. And the key to life is what you have to do is organize yourself to outlast the season. That's all. As long as you're average, you're going to get what average people get. When you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're going to do, you're going to get to the next level. But no one can do it for you but you. It's not over until I win. Life has taught me that you will grow through what you go through. Life has taught me that you will grow through what you go through. Life has taught me for every level there's another devil. Life has taught me the depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a goal. Everybody wants something in life. But many of you in this room right now, your beast mode is idle. Your beast mode is not turned on. And when you leave this place, I'm telling you, your life is going to go to a whole other level if you can learn to turn that switch on and keep that switch on. I outlasted the pain. You're saying, I've got dreams, I have goals, there are things that I want to accomplish, I'm not satisfied. Like, I don't sleep well at night. Like, like E.T., I, I dream it, E.T., I want it, E.T. Let me tell you something, if you get to that point, if you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're going to do, you're going to get to the next level. As an individual, I need you to get your schedule up. I need you to get your life up. I need you to get your words up. I need you to get your heart up. I need you to get your action up. I need you to get to a place that every single thing that you do is phenomenal so that the life you want to live, you can actually live that life. Everybody wants to be number one. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to have to be and do what they feel they've been called to do. The challenge becomes most of us, when it's time to do what beasts do, we don't do it. I need you to put this down, put this down, put this down. Because what you're going to discover as you're going towards your dream, as you're going towards your goal, they're going to be, there are so many distractions. 
there are going to be so many people that haters, so many people that come up against you, so many obstacles, so many trials, so many tribulations. When people ask me, E.T., like for real, for real, E., I know you can give me 20 things that you've done to help yourself to become successful. But E.T., I just need like one or two. Can you give me one or two? And one of the things I tell people is I outlasted the pain. I outlasted the pain. I need you to recycle your pain. When I was sleeping in those abandoned buildings, I kept telling myself, one day you'll be a homeowner. Every time I walked into that abandoned building, I told myself that this might be your current circumstances, but this will not be how the story ends. All you have to do, E.T., is to survive today. When they kicked me out of school, I knew that I would not be a high school dropout for the rest of my life. I knew I gotta get through this one day. Me and my mom have been through a lot. My mom and I have gone months and almost years of not talking to each other, but every single day I kept telling myself, one day I'll have a, a great relationship with my mom again. One day. Well, I didn't grow up with my biological father. He wasn't into my, in my life until I was 30 years old. But I told myself, today your father is not in your life, but one day. And so every single day when I wake up homeless, one day. Every single day when I woke up in that abandoned building, one day. One day is going to be E.T.'s day, but that day can't come if I give up today. So every single day when I woke up, I kept telling myself, today might not be the day, but soon it will be my day and I will recycle my pain. So what do you mean, E.T., you recycled your pain? I turned homelessness into a book. I turned my father not being in my life to a book. I turned an estranged relationship with my mom into a book. I turned being homeless into a book. I turned being a high school dropout into a bestseller. And not only do they sell it in America, they sell it across the world. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine you? I outlasted the pain.